Are you ready for another information drop on Space Engineers 2, V-Rage 3? Well, you're in the right place. So today we're going to be breaking down a presentation that was released by Naik Ayev, hopefully I pronounced that correctly, from Keen Software House, and that is their lead artist on V-Rage 3. Now this is quite an exciting presentation, but it is 37 minutes long, so my idea is to condense that down and get you all the information in an extremely short and critical time point. Now this presentation is titled Exploring New Worlds and Environments and this presentation goes on to cover height maps, tessellated voxel materials, biomes, material replacement or placement rules, terrain detailed maps, baked overlays, atmospheres, boulders, overhangs and caves. So it's got some really exciting content but I just want to say to you that all of this is subject to change, so don't take my world as gospel on this one. It, it could change, and he says that very clearly at the beginning and end of this presentation. And the other thing that I think is worth saying is that, remember, this chap is an artist, and if you had any time in the game industry, the things that the artists create can tend to vary quite a lot from what the programmers can implement in the final version of the game. So it's interesting to see this, but how much of it and how much of it can be implemented into the game will be another factor. Now, Natik starts this presentation off explaining that they have made a move from 2K height maps to 8K height maps in V-Rage 3 or Space Engineers 2. And this allows for a greater level of detail and fidelity within the terrain and the environment. And they go on to talk about how they've been dealing with an issue that existed in Space Engineers 2 about stitching terrain together. Now, terrain is made out of individual tiles, six tiles in total. And as you can see by this diagram here, they are worked or calculated which end meets up with which end. And if you just connect all these individual tiles, you get these weird ridges that you see on some of the planets now in Space Engineers. Now, Naik explains how they've managed to stitch these planets now together seamlessly and blend them together so they can create a mountain range in one region and run it across multiple tiles. Now, this is super exciting for terrain and it'll allow you to bring another level of detail to your planets. Now, following on in the presentation, Natik talks about an issue that exists currently in Space Engineers. When we're editing voxel height maps, we can only edit them on a very vertical plane so we can make voxels or the terrain go up and down but we can't affect it on a horizontal plane so this means we can't dig out terrain create overhangs and caves as such so Natik has gone into great detail explaining on this slide how he started spawning objects in Houdini. Houdini's a, a 3D development piece of software and explaining how they could use a system like this to cut out rocks by creating these basic shapes in slide two, you can see there, and then adding some noise and bumps and terrain sort of filtering to them. You can see that he's created these voxel sort of spires. Now taking them away from the terrain creates this rocky sort of face that you see in slide four and finally Natik reveals a fully textured slide with of course a space engineers ship in it now this isn't final terrain this is similar to what you call concept art for this terrain piece this would really come down to the programmers to see if they could implement something like this into the game but if it could be the terrain that you'd be seeing would be incredibly detailed now, Natik explains that there has been progress between the artists and the programmers, and they have managed to develop and integrate their 8K height maps. And they display a number of slides showing what they would look like in the in-game engine. Now, we don't see any overhangs or crispy looking shots like we saw before, but we do see some very high detailed uh, views from above of a planet that do look far better than existing space engineer. But Natik goes on to explain how they're using tessellated voxel materials so the actual texture of these voxels is tessellated and then on top of that you're applying your height map so it allows your 8k height map combined with this tessellated voxel material to capture even more detail within the terrain now in the next few slides Natik goes into great detail talking about biomes and material placement rules starting off with the first slide they talk about how the voxel height map here is also overlaying with the tessellation of that texture to create better depth and detail 
within the terrain. On top of that, they explain their new technology within the grayscaling of the biome, so you can pretty much set your materials and let it place them following the rules that you've defined. Now, adding to this, Natik goes into detail talking about terrain detail maps. Now, these are a map that are added already onto your existing terrain height map. So, imagine a flat terrain on your height map. You want to add some greater detail to it, some lumps and bumps, like a glacier, for instance, with various different bits of ice jutting up. You could create a smaller, highly detailed terrain detail map on top of that, overlay it, and you get a map just like you're seeing here. So, very cool. Adding detail to the terrain like this is going to be absolutely mad. Areas for to hide, fight, and a nightmare to navigate your over over. Now, the next two slides cover baked overlays, and this is just a nice way of saying that we've got pretty pictures of the planets at various different levels of detail. So, from a distance, a planet will be a nice predefined picture, and as you get closer, you'll get issued another one with a different level of detail until they then turn off that level of detail on these pictures and they turn it into voxels because we all know from above the voxel planets don't look as pretty as having one of these high quality rendered pictures so that's their way of addressing that how this will work in practice with people terraforming the planet we're yet to see we'll see what they do implement at a later date so let's move on to atmosphere. Now, I was a bit unsure of what they meant by atmosphere here. Was it like the vibe of the planet they were talking about, or was it about the physical atmosphere? And I think it's a combination of them both. And I could see that Natik was very excited to thank his team, and as well as Jan's team. We've talked about Jan in the past, the lead programmer, and their team are working on the physical lighting behind V-Rage 3. So the physical elements have met the artistic elements of Natik's teams here, and they've combined to create these lovely levels of detail that you can see within the atmosphere you can see the stars in the distance how the light is cast over these environments that have been crafted it is just beautiful now the final part of the presentation is a really exciting one Nati goes on to talk about boulders overhangs and caves and the work with the programmers who have allowed them to scatter these various elements across the world so for instance we've already had boulders scattered across our existing terrains we know what that looks like but we've got overhangs these predefined asteroids can be cut into the terrain now and allow overhangs within these mountainous areas to be created caves can be created by once again subtracting from that original voxel height map allowing us to have a horizontal plane to play with so that's where the presentation concluded if you feel like i delivered the information in a quick and easy format for you to understand hit that like button if you want to check out the original presentation video with the additional q a there'll be a little link down in the description below. I also grabbed some of the pictures from Twitter, so check out the links and have a look on there for yourself for more updates.